Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center in Ann Arbor. And I want to talk about lactic acidosis because uh, ketosis is really taking off. There's a lot of people talking about it, and there's um, research coming out now faster than ever before on ketosis. But uh, lactic acidosis is the mechanism of chronic disease, and it takes two or three things to do in order to fix it, and ketosis is one of them. So you can go into ketosis and still be sick because you have lactic acidosis going on. So it's, like I said, it's the most common mechanism of chronic disease. And I have other videos on this, but this video is about the history of lactic acidosis and the research behind it, the discovery, and a timeline. So um, I want people talking about lactic acidosis as much as they're talking about ketosis. So here's the history of lactic acidosis. In 1843, a researcher named Shear found it in uh, a body of a woman who had just recently died and she had sepsis after giving birth. So that's the first discovery of it. In 1858, I should back up a little bit, um, lactic acid was actually discovered in the late 1700s, and, uh, but I'm jumping right into lactic acid related to um, health. Now, when I go through this, sometimes I refer to lactic acid, other times I refer to lactate. And for most of the time, it was those two words were interchangeable. And they're actually two separate um, chemicals. But uh, for, this purpose, for the purpose of this video, just assume that they're the same thing for now. Okay, so in 1858, a researcher named Full Warzny found it in live patients. And then in 1878, uh, this researcher named Solomon found lactic acid in patients, in live patients with leukemia, pernicious anemia, congestive heart failure, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pleuritis, which is uh, infection or inflammation of the pleura or the sheath around the lungs, um, pericarditis, which is the sheath around the heart, uh, pneumonia, and several solid malignant tumors, so cancer, malignant cancer. So here we're talking about, they're coming up with this idea that, hey, lactic acid is related to death or disease in somehow, in some way. So in 1891, a researcher named Araki showed lactic acid from exhausted muscles. And that's the burning feeling that you get for about 20 minutes after you exercise and your body's trying to tell you to stop. And uh, so we know about that. And that, that lactate or lactic acid, the lactate can be used by the body as fuel um, also. And that's normal physiology right there. That's totally fine to have lactic acid in your muscles from exercise. And in 1893, a researcher named Irisawa found in six out of 11 dying patients, he found the lactic acid. And then he speculated that the high amount of lactic acid in these dying patients was caused by severe hypoxia. So I say in my previous videos and in my lectures, that you have L for lactate, O for oxygen, this happens. Too much lactic acid, not enough oxygen relative to each other. It could go like this or it could go like this, but the point is relative to each other is too much waste, not enough oxygen. That causes uh, the disease process. You have toxic and hypoxic blood and it makes the arteries dilate and now you have capillary engorgement of toxic and hypoxic blood, so therefore um, cells starve and then they die. And then you have tissue death, organ death, body death. Okay, 1907, two guys working together, Fletcher and Hopkins, found lactate was a product of carbohydrate metabolism. So this was an interesting, uh, interesting finding. And uh, they, um, lactic acid was removed aerobically, meaning with oxygen, depending on oxygen availability. So if you eat a lot of carbohydrates... Um, you can handle the excess lactic acid production by lots of exercise, taking in lots of oxygen, deep breathing, um, that kind of stuff. But you have to really exercise a lot, but you still have a lot of damage from the sugar, from the carbohydrate um, inflammation to the joints and to the tissues, etc., etc. So the point here is that if you have a lot of oxygen, then you can process out the lactic acid but the lactic acid originally in this finding comes from carbohydrate metabolism excessively. And it, it has a lot to, like our diets now are just so high in carbohydrates. Okay, 1934, Dr. Royal Lee 
uh, releases six nutritional products that fix the mechanism of lactic acidosis. Now, he, he addressed organs. He repaired organs with these little tablets, and they, these tablets are still um, in the market today. They're from a company called Standard Process. That's his company. And I did a video called King of All Supplements, and it's Cataplex B is the main supplement. There's also Cataplex G, and there's a few more that he released in 1934. Okay, now his multivitamin was released in 1929. It also addresses lactic acidosis. Okay, now in the 1920s, I don't know the exact date, and I could be wrong on the, on the decade too, but Henry Harrower, the father of endocrinology, the medical doctor, he released a product that cleans lactic acid. It doesn't fix the mechanism uh, of dysfunctional liver and dysfunctional intestines and that kind of stuff, but um, it's, cal it's called Calcium Phosphorus Co. So it's two minerals that we know of, calcium and phosphorus. I've tried to find the original recipe for it and I can't find it, but I think it just addresses the symptom of lactic acidosis, which is this milky substance that is acidic, it reminds people of vinegar, hence the name lactic acidosis. Okay, now in the 1980s, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart discovers mercury in the human body as a cause of disease. So heavy metal poisons, you know, mercury, lead, etc., cause lactic acidosis. Mold also causes lactic acidosis. Infections, bacterial infections were known to cause lactic acidosis in the 1800s, like I showed you before. So I put a little line here, mold, with a question mark. I don't know when it came to be in the modern research. I don't know if, it's in, if it exists, but mold causes a release of lactic acid too, causing lactic acidosis. So now mold is a cause of disease. Mercury is a cause of disease. Other chemical poisonings and toxicity is a cause of disease. Lactic acidosis is the mechanism of disease. So, um, so now that you have this better understanding about the, the most common cause of chronic disease and death, now that you have this better understanding, um, I'd like you to go back to, and see some of my other videos and start thinking this way. And I'll do another video about the mechanism again uh, because it's been several months and I, the way that works with YouTube is that, I have to keep repeating things because old videos sort of die off and people don't watch them anymore. So I'll keep uh, teaching uh, the same subject with different uh, facts and data that will fill in a, a bigger picture so you can, have, you can have a better understanding. Okay, so I hope you like this video because this is like phenomenal information. All of medicine needs to work with this. Every healthcare practitioner needs to know this. I did a video about this maybe three, four months ago, and I talked about lactic acidosis as quickly as I could for the first five minutes of the video, and some guy posted that I was rambling on about something, and then I got into the good information. And I, I, I just deleted the comment, but the truth is I wasn't rambling on something. I was discussing the most important aspect of all of healthcare. So, and that's what this is. All right, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, a share, and a subscribe. Thank you.